What horrid secrets do your parents have and are oblivious to you being aware of? My dad doesn't know that I know how my grandfather, his dad, died. I had always wondered why I never knew my grandfather but it was always a touchy subject so I never asked. I knew my dad basically grew up without his father but I never knew why. When I was about 22 or 23 my brother told me what had happened. My grandfather had committed suicide in front of my dad when my dad was about 8 or 9 years old. Even though I know now, I still won't bring it up. Edit. I can't thank you all enough for the outpouring of support and taking the time to share your own stories. By speaking up and speaking out we can help reduce the stigma of mental health and raise awareness for those who need it. When I was a child. We used to be semi close to my dad's family. My grandparents came up, 2 plus hour drive, to talk to my parents about an adult issue and 10 year old me was told to stay in my room with the door shut. After that, we never spoke to them again. Except for one letter that I got from them expressing sympathy when my other grandmother, who I was very close to, passed away. I had no idea what happened. Years later, I found a cousin on Facebook and we happened to go to the same college. So we met for coffee. I found out that the reason we no longer spoke was because my mom opened a whole bunch of credit cards and racked up a bunch of debts in my grandma's name that she never had any intention of paying back. My cousin and I kept it between us and she has no idea I know. Edit since this blew up, I'm about to turn 30. I have excellent credit and I check it regularly for any suspicious activity. I'm good. But thank you for all the advice. My dad used to talk about growing up really poor, having to get food from food banks, etc. It's one of the reasons that now that he owns his own business, he donates to food banks and all sorts of charities all the time, paying it back. Well, it turns out that my father's father owned a massive construction company and made millions of dollars in the 50s and 60s. My uncle was selling massive amounts of sugar and got busted. My grandfather bankrupted himself paying off judges and lawyers and all that to keep my uncle out of jail for most of his life. That's why my dad grew up with nothing. He has no idea that I know. My divorced parents are both cheating on their current spouses with each other. Not some horrid secret, but I sometimes hear my dad talking behind closed doors to my mom who passed away suddenly years ago. He typically tells her our life updates and that he misses her. My sister got married recently and I overheard him from outside his room telling my mom how beautiful my sister looked and how great her husband is that she never had the chance to meet. About how they had always spoke of that moment. Watching their child marry, and he wished she was there with him to see us. We rarely speak about my mom at home. But 14 years later she's still very alive in his heart. It's gut-wrenching at times. I want to preface this by saying I was adopted. My dad was 18 and wanted one last romp with my mom, 17, before shipping off to the military. This is where I come from. She decided to adopt me out so we could both have act. He never stopped loving me or thinking about me. I haven't told my adoptive mom I know they had these. And I may never. Edit. Wow. I never expected this to blow up like it did. So I'm going to go through and answer some common questions. Yes. I know my bio dad. We have met and talked several times. We care about each other. But we don't get along. Mainly because he is a gun-toting, god-fearing Republican who voted Trump and I'm a liberal feminist, not Radfam. But still, who volunteers at PP. Need I say more? No. I'm not mad at my adoptive parents. I love them very much. And I think my adoptive dad knew somehow that I would be the one to find those. I know my a mom and a dad are good people. A mom is a bit of a narcissist, but that's another story, and that they were thinking of my well-being at the time. I don't think it's worth bringing up and starting a fight over because it was a long time ago and, as someone who had never had children, I have no idea what the whole situation was. I'm 31 now. What's done is done. My parents got engaged after a drug-fueled 11-day bender in 1979. First born. Came along in 82. Still married. My mom had to do some soul searching for AA. She wrote a list called life resentments and having kids was the first bullet point. Found it while I was looking for my social security card to apply for my first job at 16. She kept it in a safe. 
My dad died when I was 14 and everyone refused to speak of it. My grandparents said he fell down the stairs. And they've maintained that to this day. My mom told me that he accidentally hung himself and she tell me when I was older. It took 9th grade me all of about 3 days to figure out he had died of autoerotic asphyxiation. She confirmed it years later. My biological dad died when I was 2. Car accident going to his next duty station. And not too long ago I got a box of letters he had sent my aunt, uncle and his parents. Since he died when I was so young, I didn't really know him that well. But this treasure trove of letters gave me some real insights into who he was. It was a lot of letters from the time he was in the navy before he married my mom. All the way up to not long before he died. In one set of letters he discusses with my grandparents how he and my mom aren't getting along. He mentions that they might get a divorce. But he wanted their help in getting custody of me. I think mostly because my mom was born and raised in Ireland and not yet a true citizen of the US so he was afraid he'd never see me again if I went with her. Apparently she was fine with him taking me. The reconciled. But it's interesting to know that she would have given me up and I'd have grown up in LA instead of with her. Ultimately on the east coast to the US. One year my family went on vacation where I took a lot of pictures using my dad's phone and I wanted to put them on my computer so I could share them with friends. I grabbed his phone and stated looking through his photos looking for my vacation photos when I came across my dad and mom's sex tape. Newts, etc. I never told them I found it, nor do I go back on his phone because I don't want to see those ever again. I was fixing my dad's laptop a while later and my mom kept hovering over my shoulder telling me not to snoop through his files and don't go on anything except for what I needed to. I knew what she was hiding. But I wasn't going to tell her. My dad doesn't know that I found paperwork of his from when he got discharged from the military and diagnosed with borderline personality disorder with narcissistic features. Everything about his behavior suddenly made sense but there was literally no way to bring it up to him without making him extremely, more, defensive or shutting down on me. It did give me peace of mind, though, and helped me work through a lot of trauma on my end after years of emotional gaslighting. Edit. My father also suffers from Munchausen syndrome. A disorder in which a person pretends they are sick with multiple illnesses and will even go as far as to have surgeries they don't need in order to garner sympathy and attention. This is usually done because of extreme childhood abuse and neglect. He's pretended to have cancer, epilepsy seizures, a blood clotting disorder, etc. Over the years, alas, he's still alive and would walk with a cane whenever we went out that magically disappeared at home. I now realize this ties into his BPD and narcissism as a form of coping. It doesn't make it right. But again, I've come to understand him a lot more these last few years because of it and heal myself. I went to my parents room to wake them up to drop me off to school. I saw them out cold lying naked with a dildo on the edge of the bed. I was 15. My parents met due to them being part of the same social circle. They both sold sugar with my uncle and their friends. Of course. I was demonized for being caught with some weed by the same people who were included in federal indictments. My dad is now with a woman he was cheating on my mom with, before she died from cancer. Edit. No. My father is not named Newt nor goes by DR Seuss. Don't know if it's horrid. But when helping my mother move from one house to another, I happened across her bag of six toys. Which isn't all that shocking, but it included a strap-on dildo, the bag was open and it was on top. She'd been a single woman for 20 plus years and was in her late 50s at the time. I had no idea who she was using it with nor do I want to know. My father's side of the family is riddled with a grab bag of severe mental illnesses. My father and his older brother in particular got the lion's share, while my father has a progressively worsening and treated paranoid schizophrenia, NPD, ECT, his brother is likely a bona fide psychopath and sexual miscreant. When we were 11-12 me and my cousin, Psycho's son, spent a summer together because my parents were on the outs and my uncle had a large house in the country and I fit right in with their gang of kids. It was awesome. I spent a whole summer running barefoot in an idyllic Indiana sleepy nowhere town. Right before school was starting back up and I was about to go back to live with my parents. 
I was helping my uncle and cousin clear up some old farm junk left by the previous owners behind the barn. My cousin cut himself on rusty farm equipment and my uncle sent him back to the house to have his mom clean him up and maybe go get stitches. When we were alone and saw my cousin get driven to town to get stitches with the other kids in tow, my uncle took me into the barn and molested me. I never told anyone and found out years later that my dad knew his brother was like that and shipped me off to spend a summer with him because my uncle paid my dad in cash to take me off of his hands for a few months. Expenses paid at the price of having free reign to abuse me. I don't know what price my childhood had. But I came back to my parents having a newer working vehicle and my siblings had new clothes, shoes, and school supplies which wasn't common. My mom tried to manipulate her family and my dad's family into believing that my dad was an abuser and didn't care for his family. Which I knew was bullet cause my mom was the insane one and would hit my brother and I and break it around the house. My dad is the best man I know. When I got older my dad told me the truth about the divorce and it was cause my mom became a stripper and was cheating on him with men she met at the club. It was even more confirmed when my dad showed me the divorce documents and when I went to visit my dad's side of the family I saw pictures where it was obvious my mom was ripped out of and the stories my aunt told me about her. My dad is a catholic and said because of that he tried to keep the family together through all of that cause he doesn't believe in divorce. But my mom begged so she can run away with some man. After a while my dad let it happen and not long after my mom was on her knees begging to get back together. He said no. And that was that. My dad is the most honorable, caring, and intelligent human being. Always treated me with so much love and respect. He was in the US military for 21 years. Retired and became a Spanish teacher. Retired last year and moved back to Colombia. My mom tried to guilt trip him into staying claiming that he was walking out on my brother and I doubt I'm 21 and my brother is 26. We each have our own jobs and apartments. We told my dad that we wanted him to go and be happy. And of course he went. WHO was the one that was there for US when we were crying begging for our mom while you were out duck eyeing other men. So in conclusion my dad is the bomb and I'm actually going to Colombia at the end of this week to see him for the first time 8 months. Edit. Thank you all for all of your kind and encouraging comments. I'm gonna pass on the messages when I see him. He's gonna feel very proud and happy with everything you guys have said. He definitely deserves the recognition. My uncle had just bought us awesome jeep with huge tires. No top. Floodlights. ETC. It was bright orange. Me being 9 at the time. When he came over to show my parents. All I wanted to do is take a ride in it. My uncle said it was cool. But wanted my dad to come along with him. It was kinda late. And still kinda chilly. It was western Pennsylvania in the early spring. So I brought a pillow and a blanket. Soon after we left. I fell asleep. At some point. I woke up because we were stopped. I was really comfortable so I didn't move when I woke up. But I heard my uncle ask my dad if it was okay to do this with him in the back seat. My dad responded that I was out cold. And to break out the coke. I was confused cause my dad didn't drink pop. But he thought I was asleep so I just pretended to stay asleep. I then watched as he opened the glove box and started chopping up this white powder that my uncle passed to him. Then he sniffed it up his nose. And my uncle did the same. I thought maybe I was actually still asleep and just having a weird dream. But the memory persisted for years. About 5 years ago. I'm in my late 30s now. I asked my uncle about it and he went pale. The first thing he said was you were awake. Apparently. He had scored an 8 ball. And didn't come over just to show off his new jeep. He was planning to split it with my dad. They actually were snorting coke while I was in the jeep. Edit since this blew up. Thought I'd share one more detail. I still have the pillowcase I was using that night. Full stop. This isn't really my parents secret. More of a secret about someone else they kept hidden from me. When I was 7. My best friend died. My parents got a phone call the morning after he passed and I remember watching the color drain from my mom's face when she answered the phone. I asked her what was wrong and she assured me that I didn't need to worry and she would tell me after school. She did. And my heart broke. He lived about an hour away from me at the time. So we didn't go to the same school and nobody that I knew knew him. So nobody had heard anything about his death. Which was probably a good thing for both me and my parents. 
I found it odd that I wasn't allowed to go to his funeral. I don't even remember the excuse my parents gave as to why I couldn't go with them. But I figured it was because they didn't want it to make me upset. So I pretty quickly shrugged it off. Well. Later that year I bought a cheap little heart-shaped locket from one of those quarter machines you find at pizza places and roller rinks. I decided I wanted to put his picture in it. So I'd always carry him with me and never forget his smile. When I got home I typed his name into Google Images. And among the top results were a few pictures of him. Including one from his memorial. I found one of him with a big toothy grin and clicked on it. And my heart dropped. Next to the picture was the headline from the article the photo came from. It read police arrest mother in friend's name. Death. My heart beating three times its normal speed. I read the article. And then another. The woman I thought of as my second mother had killed my best friend. The woman who called me cubby and made me hot chocolate and introduced me to the jungle book murdered my brother. I think I kind of went into shock for the next day or so. I couldn't believe it. Anyway. I didn't tell my parents that I knew for 6 or 7 years. I think I was scared of the conversation that would ensue after they found out I knew. Or maybe I just knew they hadn't told me because they felt I wasn't ready and wanted to tell me on their terms. And I had taken that away from them. When I did tell them, it broke their hearts to think that I had been carrying that knowledge with me for so long alone. And that broke mine. I still wear the locket. I bring it with me everywhere. And ever since he died, I try to live my life for myself and for him. He deserves the life that was stolen from him. Edit. Here's a picture of said locket. I found my dad's Yahoo! Personals profile. Featuring a picture of him bent over in our living room wearing nothing but assless chaps. Profile name Hot Rider for you. And it was taken with my camera. We only had one in the house. But for some reason I decided to check the exif. Just hoping. Never mentioned that one to him or my mother. My mom doesn't know I know she wasn't a virgin when she got married. She's fairly religious and says six before marriage is a no no and kind of looks down at all her siblings family that have done it moved in before. You can say you regret it, mom. But don't be so judgy. Found this out from my dad's old college roommate as my dad has never wanted to talk about this with me. Pops was working in the financial district during 9 stroke 11 and was in charge of emergency evacuation for his floor, way high up in one of the bank buildings. Saw the towers fall and had to herd everyone off his floor and out of the building. Apparently someone had a heart attack and collapsed behind their desk. He didn't find this person and they ended up dying there in the office. I think my dad might blame himself at least partially which, on top of the trauma of witnessing the towers fall first hand has lead him to locking that part of himself away from the world. One day I want to tell him it wasn't his fault and he did the best he could. My mother told me the scars on her arm were from an accident but they were clearly from one or multiple suicide attempts. I knew when I asked. But I'll let her lie. Edit. Wow. I didn't check Reddit for 24 hours and all of this is here. 1. Yes. Her scars are for sure from suicide attempts. I confirmed with an aunt. 2. Also, they are on both arms. 5-7 in all. My dad finally told me about it this past Christmas. But for years he didn't know that I knew that a friend of his shot himself in the head in front of my dad when he was 16. I found out because my mom told me about it when I was like 18 or 19. But I never wanted to pry about it and wanted him to talk about it with me when he wanted to. It definitely explained an incident when I was a kid. My friend and I were playing on my porch with cap guns that looked pretty realistic. My dad saw us pointing these at each other and flipped out. Grabbing mine and smashing it on the wall. I was so confused about that. But after I found out it made a lot of sense. Seeing his son playing with a gun and pointing it at someone else must have triggered some memory of that day. My dad was supposed to be a football prospect in high school. Go to college and eventually play pro. Got ducked over. Got my mom pregnant. And joined a gang. When he got in too deep and rival gangs were threatening to shoot his whole family. He panicked and my grandpa. Awesome helicopter pilot vet. Sent him off to boot camp that next day. This was like California in the 80s. My mother. She's been the cause of many of my problems through school with bullying. She thinks she's a reptilian witch here to save the world with her psychic prowess. 
literally, as she ended up dating a classmate's father who found out about this and thus spread this information in nasty instances to ostracize me, belittle me, and make me feel utterly worthless. I wanted to kill myself at times. And as a young ducked up individual I reflected my current self hatred onto her, but kept it to myself. I festered in that quite hate for what she caused my life to be. Why couldn't my mother be normal? Then came the realization one day when me and my father were alone and drinking the night away. He let me know about the evil and vile things my grandfather had done to her and her sister as a child. That he thought he could help her to be the wondrous beautiful woman she really is and was. He couldn't. No amount of love and compassion can make up for 15 years of senseless abuse and abuse. She has no idea I know. And that I also know this world she's made up in her head of fantasy and magic is to protect herself and cope the only way she ever knew how. I've never seen a picture of my grandfather in my life. Last year she tried to show me one and couldn't understand why I rejected the idea so heavily. I would beat that man's lifeless body until my hands broke for what the lives he's destroyed and affected. I'm a strong and capable individual now through these experiences. My mother will never be who she could have been. It's not her fault. She did everything she knew and did it to her best. I love you mom. Edit. Obligatory thanks kind stranger ah oh ah oh My parents divorced when I was 6. After which I lived with my mom. When I was 10 years old. I found a list my dad had written of things that could save their marriage. Including. More oral sex. Anal. Wife swapping. Never spoke about that to them. Someone tried to kill my father when he was in his teens. He has scars on his head from where he was beat with a hammer. He doesn't know that I know this and I only know because I overheard a conversation between my grandmother and her brothers about the incident. I found a duck machine in their closet. I know that my mom got pregnant at 15 on purpose. She was constantly being shuttled between early 80s foster care and her own terrible family. And she felt like her only way to escape was to get emancipated through marriage. She knew my dad from school. And thought he'd make the perfect husband. Smart. Funny. From a seemingly good family. And he had protected her several times. So she seduced him. Knowing their parents would insist on marriage if she got knocked up. And she did. Unfortunately for her. He turned out to be a drug dealing, mentally ill teenager from a dysfunctional alcoholic family. The marriage lasted only a few months, but she did get her escape. My mom has no idea that I know this, and she'd be devastated if she knew. When my grandfather died he left a prox 140k dollar sign American in a trust for me. It wasn't to be touched until after my parents passed away so that it could gain as much money as possible from the investments he had arranged. My grandfather was an oil tycoon in PA and no one in the family knew it until after he died. I got a call from the bank one day asking how I'd like to handle closing the accounts. I had no idea why, but apparently my parents had been taking medical bills from themselves and altering them to have my name on them, then submitting them to the bank to be reimbursed for paying my medical bills. They had bled the trust completely dry in less than 5 years. They used the money to remodel their home. I don't think I have any recourse. But whatever. I'm 35 and I have my own retirement. Just makes me mad that they would steal from me like that. Edit 1. Added a word. Edit 2. Thank you anonymous user for my first reddit gold. That means a lot to me. This technically doesn't count because I asked my mom about it last year. But until then she didn't know I knew for about 20 or 19 years. My dad was a heroin addict and used to take my mom's money to buy drugs and alcohol. He also used to lock me and my mom up in our apartment whenever he went somewhere. My mom never told me and thought I didn't know about it because I've always been pretty oblivious and I used to be on some meds during that time. Last year I decided to sit her down and ask her about it because I never knew much about my dad or about that side of my family. I just recently was told by my brother that he found a second birth certificate for my sister without any father listed. It predated my father and mother meeting by 6 months or so. My sister is 12 years older than myself and definitely looks different than the rest of the family. So my father is not my sister's father and everyone in the family knows but no one has confronted them about it. 
Also what's strange is I am raising my fiance registered sign s daughter and do not plan to have children of my own and this might be comforting to me in my current situation but not only did my siblings know 5 years before they told me but my parents have yet to even bring this up that my father raised a child that wasn't his. Edit. Sister was sent away to live with my grandparents while other 3 kids raised together. I'm close with my sister. I know it changes nothing about her relationship with me and she is still my family. My sister harbors a lot of resentment towards my parents and does not speak with them. My sister has copies of both birth certificates as well as a letter from some guy named Joe saying how excited he is to be a new parent. She never understood why her life was so different from the other kids until this all came out. My mom possibly gifted me the ring of her biological dad but that is speculation on my part. Early in their marriage. My parents thought it would be hot if my mom had sex with an acquaintance from the bus stop. She did it and felt overwhelming guilt and disgust. Not at all how they'd thought it would feel. She told me about this 17 years ago. And then I think they forgot that I knew. I don't know if they ever told my sisters. I brought it up once a few years ago and they didn't want to talk about it. When I was a kid my mom had mole removal surgery on her face. And came back and had to recover for weeks. Granted, she did have a mole removed on her face, but miraculously her A's turned into D's. Crazy how that was a side effect of face surgery. Welp there's a few but it ties into one. To start I found out my dad switches partners faster than Zeus. I came from a broken home at a young age and every leap year I would end up with a new stepmom. Everything would be nice then poof things didn't work out. Let's give Denver a try. Or maybe Aurora. Turns out he would cheat on his current wife for years with other women until they caught on and when the current wife kicked him out he would move in with new wifey. Well through the years of cheating he gathered 10 kids, I'm the 5th child. 3rd son. So I decided I'd ask my older siblings if they made the same connection. Turns out my father has been doing this since he was in high school. Same pattern. Same timing. Just before me. Welp now he's 50 years old on wifu 10. Oh and the child count is on 11. He made another one. Bonus. Usually around our 16 birthdays. We start to make the connection that none of our siblings look alike. So one of the elder siblings take them for a drive and break the news. It usually ends with that explains a lot. My dad was a soldier in the late 60s early 70s and was involved in the NI troubles. His NGF was a nurse in a Belfast hospital. Now she didn't give a damn who the injured were. She was a nurse and it was her job to treat the injured. However, the IRA types found out about her relationship with my dad and didn't take kindly to it. At all. One day, she just vanishes after her shift. She was found several days later. Tied to a lamppost in a Belfast street. She had been kidnapped. Beaten. Raped. Then tied naked to the post so she could be tarred and feathered. She was found dead, having frozen to death because none of the locals would help her. I only found out about two years ago, when the old man just starts crying out of the blue as we were having a beer together, that it still haunts him. That's the only time I've ever seen him shed a tear. I know my father has a ton of nude pornographic photos of my mother, but he never really bothered to hide it that much. I also know my mother, or both my father and her had set up an account on MSN, Microsoft Messenger, and used to dirty talk send pictures to internet people. I found out when she forgot to log out one day. I will probably never know if she did it for fun or maybe money. Ah and my father may be cheating on my mother. Edit. People suggest it might be swinging and not cheating. I don't really know but I don't think so. My mother seemed to be annoyed at my father texting. Didn't knew who he was talking to and called him out on that multiple times. They never spend the night out. And I don't think she has spare time for anything I'm not aware of. I know it's not necessarily reciprocal but still it holds some value I think.